As with any other long-standing franchise, its games will inevitably vary in quality. While there have definitely been many bad WWE games, none gained the mainstream notoriety that WWE 2K20 got when it released in 2019. In August of that year, 2K had shockingly split with Hughes, the franchise's developer of about 20 years, and Visual Concepts would be making their first attempt at creating a wrestling game. Now, as terrible as the end result was, that decision did make some sense at the time. Ever since 2K15, WWE games had gotten stagnant and 2K decided that their in-house studio could do a better job at developing these games. And for the record, I know 2K19 has a lot of fans, I see your comments, and I'll be definitely giving it another chance in the near future. But this video isn't about 2K19, it's about 2K20, and when this game released, it was a broken mess. Constant crashing, graphical errors, and weird glitches are only a few of the problems the game had. And I'm not saying this because I read it somewhere, I tried playing the game without any patches, and unfortunately, it's less funny glitches and more annoying crashes. I endured about 30 minutes of this before I caved and downloaded the game's most recent patch. So, after all these patches, I wanted to find out if behind the glitches, the negative press and all the online videos, was WWE 2K20 a good game? Let's check it out. I'm not a big graphics person. If a game looks good, that's great, and if it looks bad but still plays well, then that's also fine by me. This is why I don't really mention presentation or graphics in these types of reviews. Something has to really throw me off for me to mention graphics and WWE 2K20 managed to do just that. These character models are horrendous, they barely look like the wrestlers they are trying to depict. First off, all models look like they are dead inside. They all have an empty stare that is borderline creepy to look at. While some men's faces like Roman Reigns are serviceable, I don't think the game has any woman that looks like her real life counterpart. What happened to Lana, or Mandy Rose, or anyone really? Even worse was the fact that this was the worst timing possible to have a showcase mode featuring the women's revolution. We'll get to the mode itself in a bit, but how these women are depicted in-game is just terrible. I know who I'm supposed to be looking at, but it's like they've been recast for a Netflix documentary. A cool easter egg in the pre-patch version of the game is that blonde hair looks like it has been hand-drawn on each wrestler that has it. Hair in general has a mind of its own. It's like an eldritch beast twisting and twitching in random directions, clipping through anything and everything, defying the laws of physics while seemingly mind-controlling its vessel. Maybe that's why everyone has the empty glare. Finally, legends that have multiple versions of themselves always use the same model and it's impossible not to notice. Something also noticeable, but not as big of a problem, is that I sorely missed the camera angles and entrances that were added in WWE 2K22. No other WWE games besides these new ones had these camera angles, so I can't be too harsh on 2K20 for not having them, but their absence here did make me appreciate them even more. After you acclimatize yourself with a game's presentation, you have to deal with its gameplay. The first thing I did was turn off reversal limits, which, well, limit the number of reversals you have. I know that the game is designed around them, but I never liked essentially being punished for playing well. I know this is similar to being stunned in the newer WWE 2Ks, but to get there, your opponent has to deal significant damage to you. With reversal limits, I don't feel as if strategy is involved, more so that the person who reverses second will always be rewarded. In general, the game feels slow and janky to play. The sluggishness of the gameplay can be attributed to the game's restrictive stamina. You lose stamina for nearly everything you do, from performing moves to picking up your opponent. In every match, wrestlers will be exhausted within 3 to 4 minutes. The game encourages you to taunt and stand motionless to regain some stamina, and while, yes, this is realistic, I find it extremely boring. Matches are very cerebral in pacing, even more so than a Triple H WrestleMania match. This slow pace is also felt by how long you stay down after being hit, or even being sent to the corner. I specifically remember a triple threat match where the AI sent me to the corner and then proceeded to fight the other AI while I had to watch for what felt like an eternity. Movement feels very imprecise as well, so you need to walk if you intend to do anything with any sort of precision. Running in general feels stiff and the animation of running is preceded by your character taking two slow steps that always messed me up when trying to line something up. The AI is completely broken, there will be times when it will stop moving and will require punching in order to reboot, the AI will also sometimes refuse to attack you while you're grounded, making the gameplay space even slower. 
In regard to glitches, I did encounter some, but nothing too catastrophic. The funniest one was Bianca Belair taking a suplex by herself. Well, if you counter a move while grounded in a Hell in a Cell match, your character will always magically teleport to his feet. The ropes also behave very weirdly, as they can be contorted by any wrestler moving near them. You can definitely get used to the gameplay as a whole, as it doesn't have any flaws that ruin it completely, just a bunch of small ones that really take a toll on you as you play more of the game. And it's not all doom and gloom. I found submissions to be a lot better than what we have now, as I prefer the stick minigame over the button massing one we have now. The backstage area is also better, as it is closer to what we see on TV. The backstage area we have now is definitely more video gamier, with a large space to wrestle in, but I prefer 2K20's narrow corridors that resemble real life backstage areas fairly well. My player follows the career of two best friends, Trey and Red, as they journey from complete amateurs to WWE legends, which is to say, the usual stuff. After a failed attempt to create anything resembling two human beings using the game's creator, the plot starts in media res, and that immediately tipped me off that this was going to be a slow burn. The entire plot is narrated in the two protagonists' Hall of Fame speech, where we constantly jump back and forth in time. Initially, the story is interesting. Going through the Indies is fun, and rising through the ranks in NXT and the main roster is quick enough to keep your interest through the initial hours. However, the plot quickly becomes formulaic. Trey and Red have made a list in which they have written down all of the goals they want to achieve in their wrestling careers. And so, what happens is that during their Hall of Fame speech, they will mention that they had a goal they wanted to achieve, their story will travel back in time, you'll play 3-4 matches, and you'll achieve that goal. There's no real adversity and once you realize what the formula is, the game becomes incredibly tedious. What was daring to me was the game's tone. The story is usually upbeat with some bad attempts at comedy. The story however is constantly interjected by a storyline about Red lying to Trey about his dead biological parent status and that she forged a letter that defined his entire life. It gets brought up every hour or so and when Trey finally learns the truth, he predictably forgives Red in about Two minutes. The writing isn't a lot better in the rest of the game either. There's a lot of cringy dialogue and I was not a fan of the voice actor's delivery either. Although I will give them a pass since they did have to work with some pretty bad material. Oh no, I've unleashed hothead red! I'm gonna take that marker, bring it to your grandmother's nursing home and cross out parts of her chart so when the nurse goes to give her turndown service, she won't know to flip her over. That's right, I'm gonna give your grandmother bed sores! At least the main villain is despicable, and I found that wrestlers did have more fun voice acting in this game, with Samoa Joe and Peyton Royce being standouts. Definitely better than 2K24 in that aspect. I did enjoy some parts of the story. Trey hiding from Samoa Joe was pretty funny, while Trey accidentally sabotaging Sin Cara's trampoline leading to him going face first into the ring apron got a good chuckle out of me. I also had a major glitch when it was revealed that in that year's Royal Rumble, the final participant would be the in-universe president of the United States, The Rock, but for some reason he was replaced by John Cena. I had to restart the match, meaning rewatching the entire cutscene, this time with The Rock being visible. Oh, and cutscenes are obviously unskippable, so the mode has zero replayability. What really annoyed me about my player was upgrading the two protagonists. Now, you'd think that upgrading your character would be the most fun part of the game, but the action itself is so slow and tedious that I dreaded going to the menus to upgrade my characters. The upgrades themselves feel so insignificant as well, giving me even less reason to visit that menu. I finished the mode at about 77 overall, and if I wasn't bored, I'd probably be around 80. This makes me think that 2K wanted you to either buy the My Player Kickstarter pack or play every single optional match, and I don't know which option is worse. The mode was ahead of its time though. There are a couple of occasions where you can play empty arena matches, five months before WWE decided to steal the idea and do entire empty arena shows. Showcase mode is actually good. It retells the women's revolution, and as someone who was not watching wrestling at that time, it was really interesting to play through. However, I am sure that as in every showcase mode, bad booking decisions were omitted, as for example I don't see why Asuka had to lose her nearly 3 year undefeated streak to Charlotte. In general, I'd argue that this is probably better than what we got in 2K24. There's a couple of reasons for this. What is immediately noticeable is that the mode has commentary. While not historically accurate, it really helped the mode keep my interest. 
The commentators themselves are actually giving insight on the history behind the match and not commentating like any regular match. This adds a lot to the experience and is not something I realized was missing from 2K24. The objectives in 2K20 are also a lot simpler. There's no send your opponent to the southwest corner on the third Sunday of July anymore. It's simple stuff that helps the matches move along at a decent pace. Lastly, all of the cutscenes are done in engine, recreating the things that happened in real life. Personally, I prefer the usage of real life footage, as it gives you a better idea of what happened in the match, but I think this comes down to preference and I can definitely see how someone could prefer this style of cutscene. If the usage of real life footage is the reason we don't have commentary, even if historically inaccurate, then hands down in engine cutscenes should be the way to go. The two remaining modes we haven't talked about are Universe Mode and Towers. Multiplayer service and DLC content were unavailable as 2K shut the game service down a couple of years ago. Thank you for preserving your games, 2K. As I said in the 2K24 video, I'm not a fan of Universe Mode. I don't have the time or the energy to come up with storylines and to book shows with multiple participants. What did jump out to me was the ability to cut a promo, so I tried it out. I get the idea behind it, as well as its limitations, but watching a wrestler's mouth move with no sound playing as you have to read what he's actually saying just didn't cut it for me. I know you can't get every wrestler to read hundreds of lines of dialogue, so my question is, would this be an acceptable usage of AI? We've already seen visual concepts dabble within the 2K24 trailer, and it would be interesting to see how promos done by the wrestler's AI voice would turn out. Finally, we have towers. In towers, you can fight in an abundance of matches that have a variety of modifiers. This is essentially infinite content and it would have been a good mode if I wanted to play the game. Judging by how I have no intention of ever going back to it, it's fine. WWE 2K20 is unfortunately not a bad game. It's something even worse. It's mediocre. It functions, it's just really boring to play. It has a variety of content and I just don't want to experience it. Despite what I think of it, 2K20 nearly led to 2K losing the license to EA, but it eventually was a blessing in disguise for the company. The WWE games we have now are very solid and while they're far from perfect, they're not the snooze fest that 2K20 was. And that was my review of WWE 2K20. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and if you want to continue your wrestling video binge, Click this video to see why AEW Fight Forever is still terrible. See you in the next one.